already set up. <laughs> I'm not going to take it down and set it up. <laughs> but anyway, very quickly, um, um, I, I didn't play in any bands in high school at all. I had a, a very uh, a difficult uh, music teacher, and it turned me completely away from any kind of formal structure in high school. And uh, what I learned about playing jazz was completely from records. And from, uh, I had a wonderful, uh, actually he's a second cousin, he's my mother's cousin. And he was also a painter. And he, he influenced me in painting and color. I'm talking about 13 and 15, and that was in those years. And uh, uh, he had 78s, 33 and the thirds were just coming in, LPs were just coming in. And I started to collect some LPs. There was a wonderful uh, music store in Poughkeepsie, New York, called the Three Arts. And um, I went there, they had booths that we listened to your records in. And so I started to collect Dick Spire back and Louis Armstrong. And I liked jazz. I liked small band jazz. I wasn't too hot for the big band. Although I loved any good one who would take his souls and play with the top band bands like that. And Cooper was an influence. Dave Tuff was an influence of mine. And then I discovered Big Sid Katz, who was a black girl. I was born in, in 10, in 1910, and died in uh, 51. So he only, he only lived for 41 years. But he put down a, a, a volume of recordings with various bands, including Ben Gordon, and fired him because he was upstaging the band. And uh, they were my influences, they were my heroes. And uh, I started uh, playing professionally at 15 in, uh, in the Hudson Valley at a, at a dude ranch, believe it or not. Uh, Stan Rope Dude Ranch. It was just at the outside of Rhinebeck. And uh, that was my first professional gig. And uh, my mom would make uh, arrangements for me to play at the country range halls in the Stanfordville and Pine Plains and around those areas. Oh, yeah, my son will come. Yeah, I hated it. But I'd take my kit, and I had a 1920 set of drums that my mom bought for me at an auction sale, and I'd haul them in the car. She'd take me to the gigs, and I'd set my drums up, and I'd play about a 15 or 20 minute drum solo. Had no idea what I was doing. You know, I don't think of it, but they liked it. I made people happy. Ironically, that's what I'm doing now. Talk about it for a second. <laughs> but in the meantime, eventually I moved into New York City. And uh, I started playing professionally. I sat in at Jimmy Lyons and Eddie Collins. And when those older men heard me play, they started to hire me. And so I, that, that was my introduction to playing professionally in, uh, in bands. I played a lot, of, a lot of black musicians. Uh, Benny Morton, uh, Doc Cheatham I recorded with. Uh, this was just a whole raft of them. I you know, point was to mention them all there. Uh, yeah, they're all dead. Uh, it was a great introduction. To, uh, to life. Just to life. The work of Pat Swaller, Alec Casey, Herman Autry, and Rudy Powell. They were monsters. And to, to be on a bandstand and sit behind them, and make them cook, and have them turn to me and smile it was everything in the world to me. I wouldn't have missed it, anything. Today, I'm here, okay? And nobody calls me anymore for gigs because my time is gone for that, okay? I, I call a few of the middle-aged guys in their 50s to come up here and play for six or seven years. We did concerts over in Bainbridge at the 100-year-old Town Hall Theater. And um, we all had a wonderful time, and we made some wonderful music, and that kind of fizzled out. And lo and behold, Alex was my student, and we used to play together at my house over in Bainbridge. Really big living room, which was converted into a drum room. And then we heard about Sadiq, and we hired, we not hired Sadiq, but I called Sadiq, and uh, invited him to come over, and the three of us played in my living room. And we understood from the get-go that there was something extraordinary happening, extraordinary happening. And we stuck with it. 
And uh, if you heard some of our early stuff from 03, 04, uh, where we are today is, is, is uh, miles beyond that. And, and it's because of our energy and because of our imaginations and our creativity. So that's it. I'm playing uh, some drums. Most of my drums are from the 30s. They're all slingerlands. Uh, and my cymbals are jumpers that I found in, in people's cellars. I, this is the only zildjian I, I play on today with the hi-hats. I have no idea. There's no names on at all. They've been hammered. Uh, they've got the greatest sounds. And they're very artistic from that standpoint, so I love them. Um, nobody sponsors us. Uh, no drum company sponsors us. Uh, Tama or any of those drum companies, whatever they are. Ludwig, we don't get any money from anybody, nor does Tim. Tim gets no money from the uh, Council of the Arts, the Municipal. He's an independent producer and artist, and I love him for that. I really do. I think you ought to applaud that. He doesn't fill out any forms, uh, doesn't belong to any uh, organization. And nor do I. And um, over in my, in my neck of the woods, no uh, arts group has ever sponsored anything that I have done at all. And they've never even invited me to play. And I have, he has all his credentials and I have my credentials. And we don't get invited. They invite people from Ohio or California and they fly in. But they don't pay any attention to color. Uh, I'm a painter also. And I started out as an abstract painter, and uh, I was influenced by Ed Hopper and many of the expressionists and so on and so forth. And I'm not really active at that now, but I want, I'm sharing that with you only because when I play, I think a lot of color and, and shadings and tonalities and things like that. So I may go on a drum roll, and, and it has nothing to do with uh, a rhythm of the bop, the bop, the bop, the bop, the this tremors and so on and so forth, and explosions, hot explosions and so on and so forth. That's pretty much it. We hope you enjoy our show. Uh, we don't know where we're going to start. We don't know when we're going to end. And there'll be times when we're well, Sadiq and I will lock in that is absolutely fierce, and we call those things a frenzy. When they happen, it's totally, it's just energy between us, just, just uh, uh, very much like, um, like a thunderstorm. Yeah. <laughs>